Hello, this is Joe Savage from DevHQ.net, and today we're diving into a Lua tutorial about variables and user input. So I've just created a new file here with the .lua extension, and let's get started. So variables in Lua are pretty much just ways to store temporary bits of information. So you can think of a variable a little bit like a box. You can put a value inside the box, you can see the value that's inside the box, and you can always change the value that's inside the box. Now, one of the easiest ways for me to show this to you is to show this to you. So if we just go ahead here and create a variable, you create a variable in Lua by first of all writing its name. So if a box doesn't have a name, you can't refer to it anyway. That's why all variables need to have a name. So in this case, let's just call it variable underscore one. And then we can just go ahead and just set it equal to something. So variable one equals, and in this case, let's just set it equal to a string value, which remember, they're just a bunch of characters denoted by single or double quotes. So in this case, so it's your hello. So in this case, we've created the variable variable one or the box variable one, if you want to think of it like that. And we've set it equal to the string value hello. And now whenever we want to use this value, we can simply just use the variable's name. So in this case, we can just say print variable one, and that should go, okay, print whatever the heck is variable one, and it's gonna go, okay, variable one is hello. And so if we just go ahead and run this, there we go, bam, it outputs hello. Now this may seem kind of useless at the moment, because obviously we can just sort of do that, and that's going to print hello just the same, uh, as we can see here. Bam, it just printed hello exactly the same. Now, the point is that we can sort of add a little bit uh, of dynamicness to a program. So if we just say print hello dot dot variable one, or, you know, hello comma space variable one, then save that and run that, you can see it almost looks like the program's a little bit customized. And so when we start getting input in from the user and putting this into variables and doing different things where variables can have different values in different cases, obviously then it becomes extremely useful to have these values that we don't quite know what they are. So in this case, when we're actually telling it to print out variable one, we don't really know what it is. And we have to go back in the program to actually decipher, ah, oh, variable one is equal to Joe, which is why we're outputting that here. Um, so if you ever want to set a variable to a different value at a later date, so in this case, let's just go back to just outputting it. Um, just like that. If we want to change the value, uh, very, very simply, we just do what we did up here, basically. So even though it's already been created, same thing. We just go, okay, whatever the heck variable one is, set that equal to a different value. So we can just say, you know, goodbye, and we can print the same thing. So we're using exactly the same line here, print variable one, but it's going to do something different because the variable is, well, it contains a different value. So if we just go here, we clear. Whoops, and um, we just do that. You see, there we go, it outputs hello and then goodbye, uh, using the same core line to do the work. Now, I should probably also touch here, I should probably also touch here, whoa, I should probably also touch on data types here. So you can see here, this is a string value, we've talked about this before, but we can confirm this by using the type function. So whenever you just like type and then you write a value, that will sort of give you back the type of that variable, but it doesn't output it. So if we wanna output that, we can just go ahead and shove it inside print, and you are allowed to nest functions like this. So in this case, it's going to kind of work backwards. It's going to go, okay, first thing we're going to do, what's variable one? Oh, variable one is hello. So it's going to kind of replace that there. And then it's going to go, okay, so we want to get the type using the type function of this value, hello. And then it's going to go, okay, the type is a string. So it's going to return string, and then it's going to print string. So if we just go back to that there, it should output a string. Let's just run it, and there we go, it did output string, because the type of variable one, um, as it is at this point, is a string. Now, obviously, strings aren't the only data type, so if we just go ahead and go variable one equals five, uh, whoops, didn't mean to put that semicolon there, and then we run this same line, we should sort of get something that says number, because that's a number data type. So there we go, it says string, because that's the first thing we outputted. We outputted variable one when we set it equal to double quote, hello, double quote. And then we set it to five when we printed the type, and we get number, because five is a number type. Um, I should probably also very quickly touch on the fact here that if you go five plus, and you kind of add a string, which is a number, Lua is really, really nice for you, and it kind of does the conversion for you. So in this case, it's gonna go five, plus, so he wants to kind of add numbers, string 100, well, I guess he means this to be a number, so it then converts this into a number for you, so it converts it into that, which then will convert into that, so variable one will be set equal to the result, even if you're adding a string rather than adding a traditional number like this, which we haven't really talked about, but we will go over that at some point. Um, so in this case, this should still be a, a number type, just like that, so we still get string number, perfect. Now, we should also very go on a very brief tangent here uh, about comments. So comments are pretty much just notes for any humans that are reading your script. So if you're working in a team, or if you're sending your script to a friend or to other people that might read the code, then you can very simply just sort of use 
double hyphen to denote a comment and then you can write anything you like here and it's not going to affect the way your script runs. So in this case, I'm going to comment in what certain lines do if you don't sort of remember. So if we comment in here, 100 is automatically converted to a number type for addition. That's a long comment, I don't know if that's going to fit into the... Uh, the video recording window, but I mean, don't worry about that. The, the point is that comments are very, very useful, and they're also part of sort of good coding practice. So if you're going to come back to a script perhaps in a few months, especially while you're at this learning stage, if you create something and you might come back to it at a later date, it's obviously very useful if you go, hey, I might not remember what this does in sort of a month's time, I'll comment this in. So, uh, you know, just, if we're going to forget what the type function does here, type uh, returns the type of... Um, the parameter passed, or whatever. So in this case, it's going to return the type of variable one as we've talked about. So comments, very, very useful. I'm not sure how much we're actually going to be using them in this tutorial because the script isn't going to be amazingly complex, but they are certainly worth remembering how to do um, commenting about comments, perhaps, if you think you're not going to remember those in a few months. So the other data type that we really should talk about in this tutorial is the Boolean data type. Um, so pretty much this is just a true or false value. So we've talked about string, we've talked about number. Let's just quickly touch on the Boolean type as well. So variable one, pretty much a Boolean can either be true or false. It only has these two possible values. And although this may seem kind of useless right now, uh, believe me, it does come in useful. So in this case, if we say variable one equals true, and we print type variable one, we save, clear, Let's see what it says. Here we go. So we have a string as the first one, a number as the second one, and a boolean is our third type that we've used there. So there we go. We've talked about some basic variables. Let's move on to some user input. So we've used io.write before to output text to the screen, although we've also used print for this purpose. io.read is kind of the other end of that, and we can actually get input from the user using that. So if we just go ahead and we just remove all this for now, and we just print something like or if we use iota write in this case actually, because I don't want a new line. Iota write, enter a number, maybe. And then what we can do, we just create a new variable. So in this case, let's call it user underscore input. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it equal to io.read. And what that's going to do is it's basically just going to, obviously, we create this new variable, and then we just receive input from the user and put that into this variable. So uh, we can represent it if we just go ahead and just print it back to the user after they uh, put it in. So we go back, and let's just run this. You can see it says enter a number, and it waits for me to enter a number. So if I just say 52, I then press enter, and it outputs 52 for me because that's what we've told it to do. We've said print user input. Um, so it does wait until the user has entered a value until it then proceeds to the rest of the program. Now, obviously, this is very useful. Getting input from the user makes a program like a million times more useful uh, for the most part. So in this case, let's just create a simple script which maybe uh, says hello to a person. So enter your name and then user input equals I to read. We'll keep this line. So we're creating a new variable called user input and we're setting it equal to the user input. And then let's just print hello. Then we use the concatenation operator here, so we get using the string hello, and then we're concatenating it with sort of sticking it together with whatever the user put in here. So it's going should greet the user at least. So if we just uh, run that, enter your name, Joe, and then it says hello, Joe. Yay. Maybe we want to add some punctuation to this. We just use the concatenation operator again. We add some punctuation, rerun the script, and enter your name, Joe. Hello, Joe. Yay, it works. So it's pretty simple, and just as we can create multiple variables, we can of course use io.read multiple times. So in this case, if we say enter your name, and we just sort of copy paste this, uh, and we say enter your age, and maybe say you know age input, and let's change this to called name input. Input. So in this case, we're saying io.write enter your name, and then we create a new variable called name input, and we set that to the user value. Oh, sorry, whatever the user inputs, and then we go okay. Then io.write enter your age. And then I would read to so receive a value and put that into age input and then print hello user input. And then we just change this a little bit. And it's not called user input anymore, it's called name input. Um, and then let's just add, or we can just add a print or whatever. Print you are dot dot age input dot dot years old. So it's pretty simple. It's basically just echoing uh, the user back the values they entered, but it does demonstrate user input and it does demonstrate um, variables. So if we just go ahead and clear, we run that, enter your name, Joe, enter your age, 16. Hello, Joe, you are 16 years old. Perfect, it works. 
So that's pretty much all I have to talk about in this tutorial. We've covered some pretty important things. So have a play around with the variables and user input and just see what you can do and just to sort of play around with the user for now. And we'll build on that in later tutorials. If you want to know anything more about what I've talked about in this tutorial, if you're viewing on YouTube, the related text tutorial is in this video's description. Or if you're viewing on the website, the related text tutorial is just below where this video is embedded. So that's all for now and have a nice day. Thank <laughs> you.